Hello, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Andrei Wojtenko, and uh, welcome to the uh, July edition of our Detection Threat Highlights webinar series. Uh, I'll be here with you to share what we have, what new uh, things, what 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 improvements uh, do we have uh, within uh, VMRA. And uh, yeah, here is the agenda for the webinar. We have pretty lot to cover. Uh, first, we will start with new VTIs that have appeared uh, in a VMRA platform. There are some pretty interesting ones there. Then we will go to uh, phishing improvements since we have more and more people using VMRA to uh, detect unknown phishing. Uh, lastly, there will be improvements uh, and new additions in, in our uh, Yara rules database that are available to all of our customers. There are some pretty interesting things there as well. Uh, and obviously not to cause uh, death by PowerPoint, not to just show you the slides. I will go into a quick demo where I will show how to use VMRay for phishing analysis, including uh, showing you uh, machine learning detection, uh, as well as uh, I will demo new VTI's uh, operation uh, in a couple of red line samples analysis. But before we dive into this, please share your opinion on uh, what topics are most interesting for you. That will definitely help us to adjust future version and like spend more time on the things that are more interesting to you. Sadly, we don't have demo option here. I see that I cannot vote. All right. I guess everyone has finished voting. Yes, we see the results. Oh my, everyone is interested in EDR silencer. Okay, uh, let's move on. I think the silencer will be at the end of the show, so I will definitely cover it. Uh, maybe next time we will have some demo about EDR silencer and the respective Yara rule as well. But let's start with the uh, VTIs. For those who don't know yet what VTIs are, uh, you can think of VTIs uh, is an acronym for VMRA Threat Identifier. And uh, you can think of VTIs as an indicator, as the marker of the strange behavior of the sample that we study. Like this is something that a uh, normal sample would not probably do. Uh, if you see a lot of different things that sample is doing, even like they are like low level things like uh, going out to internet for a Word document or something like that, you can still combine them and see that you know, like this sample is doing a lot of strange activities. So probably that's something that is uh, not good. And uh, having this database of VTIs, we can uh, we can correctly identify the malware that even tries to stay very, very low under the radars. Uh, like I said, we have a unique database of VTIs. Uh, we currently have more than 600 different VTIs available and the database is constantly growing. So in uh, this month, in uh, June, we have added uh, three more. The first one is uh, reading clipboard uh, their attempts to read clipboard data uh, via the PowerShell. That's the pretty common technique to uh, get the content of the clipboard for several malicious sectors like uh, TA571, for example. In terms of mitre mapping, that's the, that's the input capture, obviously. And uh, why do we need this? I mean, why someone even want to get the content of the uh, clipboard? The answer is pretty simple because of the password managers. When you use a password manager and you want to 
get your password from application A to application B. Uh, for some while, this password will uh, stay in the clipboard. And if the attacker is fast enough, or if it's um, if it's if it's done pretty often, uh, the chances are high that you will end up with having a password that uh, was copied to the uh, clipboard, but the clipboard wasn't uh, cleared. To um, to avoid risks of uh, you know, your passwords are within the uh, clipboard. Obviously, it would be much safer to use browser plugins, for example, to uh, share the password between the uh, password manager and the application, so the website or something. Uh, but uh, yes, yeah, still, this technique exists, and uh, there is a lot of malware uh, or uh, different ware that, uh, that tries to use this, I would say, legitimate technique. Uh, so we have added the capability to detect such attempts, and uh, currently, uh, all all the attempts to grab the content of the clipboard with the help of the PowerShell will be automatically detected and reported by uh, VMRay. Moving on to the next one, that's another PowerShell story. So living off the land is something uh, pretty popular these days. Uh, so the next one will be the detection of Windows Defender tampering via the PowerShell. Uh, we see more and more customers who start using uh, Windows endpoint protection, namely Windows Defender. And uh, the difference between Windows Defender and the third party tools is that it is natively integrated on one hand. On the other hand, that's the part of the Windows. So it can be uh, stopped or modified or adjusted. The settings can be adjusted via the PowerShell commands as well, like it is shown here on the screen. You can uh, even completely disable uh, Windows Defender, like the third line on the screenshot. Uh, why it's important and uh, why attackers want to do this for obvious reasons. I mean, rarely they want to completely shut down Windows Defender, but for example, creating exclusions for some folders and then copying malicious payloads into these folders will help them to establish persistence and will help them to further propagate and do lot moves uh, within the network without being detected by Windows Defender on the affected host. In terms of my threat, it's obviously defense evasion. And uh, there was at least one group the by and line uh, that was reported to use such techniques. We will see also attempts to create exclusions in Windows Defender uh, by a red line sample that we will have in the uh, demo session. The next one is uh, detection of uh, remote template ejection. Remote template ejection is a pretty popular technique that stays with us for quite a while already. Uh, the idea behind it is that the malicious payload is not delivered together with the uh, Microsoft Office uh, document, but rather when user starts the document, it reaches out to some location in the internet, to some website on the internet uh, for a template. And with this template, uh, they get the malicious payload, which further on tries to explode some vulnerabilities within Microsoft Office or do some harm by any different, any 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 other means. Uh, this technique is pretty popular uh, for quite a while. Like I said, that's a defense evasion. Uh, the popularity is, uh, yeah, explainable easily. When uh, you deliver a thing like this, it quite easily passes uh, all uh, all email security products because there is no payload. When the email is delivered, uh, the uh, payload itself is located somewhere in the on the internet, and it needs to be downloaded by the user when user opens documents. So there is nothing to check for email gateway. Uh, so the 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 uh, technique again is uh, pretty popular. It's quite easy to to uh, carry out. You might not even notice initially, like on the screenshot, msofficeupdate.com and then blah, 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 blah. You might not even notice from the very beginning that something bad happened, but at the end of the day, that's a template injection. And uh, that's where uh, host infection actually starts. Uh, by the way, recently, not, not, not just... Uh, 
not just these APT groups used uh, template ejection. Uh, recently, uh, Dargate was uh, delivered in a huge campaign with uh, Microsoft Excel file uh, using remote templates that was uh, located somewhere on the on the internet. We will see this in the red line analysis as well. Moving on to our phishing capabilities. Again, more and more customers use VMRay for phishing detection. Uh, because of the common problem, they still have phishing. They, 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 they have implemented email gateways. They are using uh, pretty sophisticated uh, mail uh, protection tools, but still unknown phishing is unknown phishing. Most of the uh, most of the email vendors rely by the Intel that they uh, get from their honeypots and uh, so on. Uh, however, VMRay is able to uh, complete this protection by the capability of uh, full analysis of unknown phishing, which means phishing that is yet not registered nowhere, uh, not known to any security vendor, but still for some reason you hit this. A good example here is user reported phishing, meaning the phishing that have successfully surpassed email gateway, ended up in the user mailbox, and then users that are trained by the security awareness program to send everything suscious to security op to uh, security operation center, forward those emails to SOC, and uh, then the SOC has to deal somehow with this abuse mailbox. Obviously, you can pick up all those emails manually. You can open all these URLs within these emails manually, but uh, that's not pretty convenient. And uh, the question is how effective this would be. Uh, so like more and more customers, we see uh, use VMRay to detonate such URLs or the whole email. We have the capability to, 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 to extract artifacts from the whole email. I will show this using the demo as well. And uh, such URLs are submitted into VMRay and we are capable of detonating them, carefully studying, uh, all of the content on these URLs uh, and uh, doing a thorough and proper analysis and then uh, coming up with the uh, definite verdict on whether this is phishing or not phishing. On top of the capability to, to analyze the email, we have a pretty sophisticated algorithm, which is called uh, Smart Link Detonation SLD here, Smart Link Detonation Algorithm. Uh, that's uh, one where we decide uh, if we want to detonate URL at all or not. Uh, why smart and why we need it at all? Uh, the point is that when someone is forwarding the URL or, or the whole email to us, uh, we need to decide if we want to detonate some URL there. There are URLs that we don't want to detonate because there's the company address, the company website, and uh, obviously there is no sense in in uh, full analysis of some URL that exists for many years, like hewlettpackard.com or something. Uh, on the other hand, there are certain URLs which should never be detonated at all, like uh, unsubscribe links or subscribe links, like, uh, for example, password uh, regeneration links, like uh, links to sign the document and so on. These links should not be detonated. And uh, we make sure that once being even even being submitted to VMRay, we don't go into these detonations. For this, again, we have this smart link detonation algorithm and the recent enhancement here is uh, the uh, correct detection of uh, URL redirection patterns, uh, like you see on the screen. And uh, that's what we start detonating now. And uh, we expect to get even more unknown spam with this. Another huge addition into uh, our phishing detection capabilities is uh, a new warrior, <laughs> a new part, a new, a new member of our uh, machine learning algorithm. Uh, we have, uh, for quite a while, we have Osprey and Stingray that are uh, in lab trained, uh, unassisted uh, machine learning algorithms that help us again to uh, detect unknown uh, phishing. Recently, we have added the new model, 
which is called Manta Ray, that allows you to get even a uh, better detection of the uh, URLs and detect phishing light even more precisely. We have calculated for the first months that uh, we see the increase in phishing detection efficacy in 28%, uh, which is quite a lot for the unknown phishing, especially for, for unknown phishing. Uh, we had, we, we, we uh, have this model in the uh, production mode for quite a while already, but we wanted to make sure that we will bring only value and no false positives to our customers. Uh, so it was like under the radar, it was uh, working, but not reporting and not changing the verdict of the sample for several months. Now, now since June, we have it available. And like I said, uh, we see a huge increase in, uh, in the efficient detection efficacy. With that, uh, I will switch to a demo part. But before I go into demo, since the demo will consist of two, uh, two, two, two parts, uh, I checked if you see my fingers. Uh, the demo will consist of two parts. In the first part, I will show how to submit phishing into 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 VMRay, what capabilities you have there, and uh, in in the second one, we will uh, look into two sample analysis into two red line uh, samples. And uh, since this is red line, a couple of words about red line itself. So red line is uh, is a stealer, which is uh, available on the market. Let's call it market. Since uh, I would say early 2020, if you remember COVID time, all of this and red lines has has appeared some somewhat around these days as well. Uh, it's quite popular for four and a half years, for more than four and a half years. It helps attacker to steal different uh, private information from uh, victims, uh, sensitive uh, like passwords, like uh, crypto uh, wallet uh, parameters, like uh, pan, uh, email accounts, uh, Telegram accounts, and uh, so on and so forth, I don't know. Discord accounts. The malware itself is uh, pretty evasive. It checks on the presence of uh, different protection tools. It checks uh, if it runs on the uh, virtual environment and so on and so forth. But we will see this all in the in the analysis. In some cases, it even tries to uh, suppress the uh, protection or uh, change the settings of the uh, protection tools so that it can. Uh, establish the persistent and start shipping this uh, sensitive information that is stolen from customers uh, to the C2 servers where the attackers can pick it up and later sell on some dark web uh, forums uh, or I don't know where they sell it. Let's switch to a demo. So let's start with uh, how you can use VMRay, how VMRay can help you with uh, phishing detection. Of course, when you receive a phishing email or when phishing email is reported to you by one of the members of your organization, and uh, this is uh, this is an abuse mailbox, you pick, a, you, uh, pick up an email uh, from the abuse mailbox, you can simply copy the URL from this phishing, uh, okay. Not 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 efficient yet, but the suspicious email. Go to VMRay interface and uh, say that you want to uh, simply submit it here. Then change some settings, uh, hit analysis, and uh, everything will be perfect. However, uh, there is a more easy way to do this. Uh, once you uh, get it somewhere into your in your abuse mailbox, or um, you receive it via email, or you have some third party tool that does your uh, that does your abuse mailbox management. What you can do is you can simply forward this email into our our mailbox, which is called IR mailbox. IR mailbox is basically a mailbox that is assigned to you to your VMRay account. Mm, uh, 
it has an address at irmail minus mailbox.vmray.com, which means it belongs to VMray. Whichever email is sent to this mailbox, it will be received by us. It will be parsed. All attachments and URLs will, will be extracted there and detonated within the VMware environment. You will see them in submission. You may or may not have the report around that. Uh, and uh, yeah, the fantastic, fantastic. Uh, doesn't change much. Uh, you can submit uh, samples to us to this uh, to this uh, mailbox that uh, belongs to VMRay. Again, every email that is sent to uh, this mailbox will be parsed. All attachments and URLs will be extracted from there. They will be uh, detonated automatically, uh, and uh, all these detonations will be tightened to your uh, account. So you will have them in submissions, in the uh, in the automation dashboard, and so on and so forth. Let's take a look on how it will work in practice. Uh, I do have phony phishing email that I have received, uh, basically telling me that uh, my, sub my uh, Netflix plan uh, was adjusted according to my wishes and currently I'm a super premium user and uh, the bill to this uh, adjustment is included into the attachment. Since this is the phone efficient key mail that is created by me, I will safely open it. And uh, yeah, basically the bill just contains the QR code. Uh, also telling that my current my current subscription uh, will cost me 160 euros per month, which is a lot. Uh, I don't want to pay this, so I'll probably scan the QR code to change and adjust some settings. But maybe it's not safe. Maybe it's not good. So let's uh, forward this email to the IR mailbox. Uh, let's copy it first. Now forward it to IR mailbox, hit send. And the email will go into IR mailbox in order not to make you wait along. Uh, that's the email just arrived. I, I already did the analysis of the sample and let's take a look into what we see here. We see that the whole email turned out to be malicious. Uh, and uh, why it was malicious? Because uh, the attachment was malicious. We saw the attachment, there was just a QR code. There are no URLs, no payload, no attempts to exploit some vulnerabilities. So let's take a look at what's what inside the attachment and why all this was claimed malicious. Again, Static analysis was okay. Uh, file analysis was okay either. However, the URL that this QR code led to was malicious. So let's see what happened during the URL analysis. When we analyzed URLs, we uh, saw that, uh, first of all, the uh, heuristic part, but also the uh, machine learning engine actually tells us that uh, the phishing attempt, the, the uh, phishing web page uh, was detected by the machine learning engine uh, during the analysis. And let's take a look on what exactly was that website. You see that it looks like Netflix, tastes like Netflix. So I think that this phishing attempt was uh, made up to steal my Netflix credential at the end of the day. So it was a credential harvesting attack and yeah, VMRay helped you not to lose your Netflix account. But in most of the cases, this is something more serious. This is uh, either attempts to uh, harvest the credential to your uh, Microsoft uh, systems or something connected to a banking account. Again, you can submit just the URL 
but in this case you would have to manually extract it from QR code, which is not complicated. Also, you will lose uh, time here. So it's much easier to just forward an email to VMRay and then we will do the rest of the job by uh, simply uh, extracting all the attachments and URLs from the email, uh, analyzing them, detonating them, and bringing you the result. By the way, this one says that uh, also AV and heuristics uh, match at this detection. Uh, we, we, we have the previous analysis of this sample that happened like six hours ago. Uh, in uh, this case, it was uh, yeah uh, more or less the same. Uh, let's move on to the next one. Let's move on to the second part of the demo, which is uh, the analysis of the red line sample. Again, red line, a stealer. And uh, we got two pretty interesting samples here. The first one is uh, common doc file. You open it up, nothing. You, 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 you don't expect something terrible to happen because there are no macros there. Uh, however, we end up with many, many, many different VTIs, uh, and these are, again, these are the reasons why we believe that was a malware. These are behavior indicators. Uh, they are pretty unique in some cases. Uh, of course, actually, we, we uh, know this is the red lines as we saw the configuration. Our uh, malware config extraction model was able to uh, get the uh, config of the malware. But if not, if, if, if the malware config extractor doesn't help us for some reason, because this is the new family or something like that, let's take, let's, let's take a look into other behavior algorithms, into other behavior uh, markers that help us here. So first of all, uh, that's exactly the uh, special guest of today's uh, session, the template injection attempt. And if we take a look into the into the uh, process execution map, we see that uh, when the sample starts, the word has started, and uh, then some remote connection was made and some attempt to inject the uh, template happened. And that template actually later on executed the vulnerability within the equation editor of the Microsoft Office. And then with that vulnerability exploited, it was able to download the actual payload of the uh, red line. And then red line started its job. Since again, this is a red line, it has to check where um, where it's run and it's run uh, in the absolutely normal uh, operating system with uh, no AV software. Uh, it checks a lot of uh, different things. It checks for the presence of AV software, anti-spyware software, firewall software, and so on and so forth. Uh, once everything is checked, it starts looking for the uh, sensitive information since this is a stealer. And here is the part where it looks for uh, different customer data like uh, FTP data, cryptocurrency wallet location, sensitive browser data, sensitive mail data. Also takes uh, different uh, screenshots to maybe grab the content or the password or something and so on and so forth. So this thing really does a lot of uncommon, let's say uncommon behavior. And uh, that's why even uh, without having the config, we can definitely say that this is a, a bad sample and uh, the behavior is bad as well. By the way, we see that it uh, makes a connection to somewhere outside on this uh, strange AP address and even more strange port. And if we take a look into the configuration itself, that we were able to uncover, we will immediately see that uh, this is the C2 address of the red line. So even, even without the config, my point is that even without the config, VMRay gives you precise and exact explanations why the file is malicious and uh, what are the IOCs associated with this bad behavior. Again, uh, VTIs helps us here a lot. The other sample is uh, pretty interesting as well. I don't see that we have a lot of time, so I will just uh, show you briefly 
what is interesting here, that's another red line. So obviously another checks, uh, another lookup for sensitive information. Unlike the previous sample, this one tries to create exceptions in uh, Windows Defender to better download more uh, malicious uh, stuff. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what new VTIs created by VMRay will detect and uh, report as well. So again, with new VTIs, uh, you can better analyze and get more reliable uh, verdict on uh, malicious uh, behavior of the samples with new addition into uh, machine learning algorithm you can detect unknown fission more precisely. Uh, but let's get back to the presentation because I think that I'm running out of time a little bit. And uh, yeah, we still have a couple of slides to cover and the poll at the end of the uh, presentation. Do you still see my screen? Uh, no, you don't see my screen, so... How about now? I think you should be able to see my screen with the demo time. Someone, please type something. Is that correct? Amazing. So let's get uh, let's get to the final part of the uh, of the webinar, which is new Yara rules. Again, every month we see new Yara rules and uh, the additions here are EDR silencer, new Yara rule to detect EDR silencer as well as some packers for uh, Linux malware, but let's start with EDR silencer. EDR silencer is a tool that is used by, it's an open source one that uh, basically uses Windows filtering platform to uh, shut down EDR connection to the cloud. EDRs, unlike AVs, do not rely much on their uh, local antivirus signatures. Uh, and they constantly ship the telemetry and the detection into the cloud to get more precise verdicts, to get a better detection rate, to clean up false positives, and so on and so forth. So when EDR is fully disconnected from the cloud, I wouldn't say it goes blind, but the quality of uh, detection is uh, usually decreased dramatically. So the CDR silencer tool, again, that's an open source one, and it uses uh, WFP to uh, prevent the EDRs that are mentioned here on the list uh, to connect to their cloud and uh, thus uh, have better detection rate than uh, they, 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 they would have when run only uh, locally. Different variants of this utility are circulating in the wild. There are a couple of uh, threat actors who use this utility already to uh, establish better persistence and to uh, and to evade uh, being detected. So with new Yara rules, we are capable of detecting uh, or we are capable of uh, detecting attempts to use uh, either silencer for these uh, purposes. Finally, uh, we got uh, the support for different modify UPX uh, packet files, as well as the use of the kite shield to uh, pack the uh, Linux executable kite shield, for example, is pretty often used by VNT and uh, Dark Mosquito. Uh, currently, with new uh, Yara rules, we are capable of uh, detecting uh, such attempts as well. And since we are approaching the end of the session, I would love to thank the whole security uh, community, United We Stand. Uh, thanks to all the uh, companies and organizations that are mentioned here, including GitHub. Uh, and uh, now I guess it's the time for a second poll of the webinar, where we ask you to share, like, since you are mostly VMRay users here, we would love to know about what features do you utilize most?
Nice. It was quite quick. It was quite quick. Oh, it's a half half. Someone likes malicious URL analysis, someone likes suspicious file analysis. So uh, let's move on and wrapping up the webinar. Uh, if you have any questions, that's the right time to ask them. If not, if you're still not a VMRate user, you got this uh, possibility to get a three months free access with the code detection three. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching and for surviving this more than half an hour. And I'm ready to answer any questions if you have any.